So I feel like the art on the walls in my house is like cobbler shoes. It's the last thing that gets done. And I've been meaning to change the photos in a number of different places for a while now, like these photos here, which are identical. <laughs> it's the same photo, just printed on two different media. Um, and I wanted in this video to go through how I prepare my images to get printed. And I've got a number of places that I want photos to be printed and go on the wall that's gonna be a little bit different. So I want something on this wall here, a few on this corridor here, here, and a few down there as well. And here to replace this 13 year old print. And this wall here. So White Wall reached out to me recently and they asked if they could sponsor a video and they produce, um, they're a photo lab, they produce amazing wall art from your photos. And I thought this is a good opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. Um, I could tell everybody how I prepare my images to pre-printed. Obviously I print a lot of my own images, but a lot of people don't have a printer, so I can talk about how you can prepare your images to get printed, which is the main part of this video really. And I could also get some wall art. I can get some of my photos on my wall, which is really important. And I think it's good to look at your own photos printed. I love it. You see me do it all the time. The thing is I just put them in drawers rather than actually put them on my wall, which is so stupid. So before I go back to my walls and have a look about what photos I'm going to put on there, let's talk a little bit more detail about monitor calibration and all those sort of things. So let me explain. We get our images into Lightroom like this, but how do they look? What is all this color space stuff about? And color space is something that an ICC profile is people, so people just go with their brain space when they, when they think about this. And it is fairly complicated, but I want to try and simplify it as much as possible. First of all, you have your camera, you shoot in raw and it's going to just shoot the data raw to the camera. There's no color space associated with that. Now your cameras, different cameras can shoot different various um, ranges of color, but all of them can pretty much shoot bigger color spaces than you're going to be able to display on your monitor. Your monitor, most monitors display around about an Adobe RGB color space. Some a little bit better, most a little bit worse. Lightroom uses a pro photo RGB color space, and you can't change that, you can't set it up, you can't work in a different color space, that's what it uses. Um, I'm not gonna go into Photoshop, but in Photoshop you can choose what color space you work in. And what you've gotta see as a color space is it's a way of interpreting that data. So it's the, the monitor um, will, will interpret different than Lightroom will. So the first thing you've got is Lightroom saying, this is the pro photo color space that I'm gonna work in and then your monitor can only see a subset of those colors. And usually what you find is the greens that get affected the most when you change color space. And you've got Pro Photo RGB, and then you've got Adobe RGB, and then you've got sRGB, which is generally what's used for web and all the type of web technology um, and fo photos around that. So most of the stuff that you see on the web, you'll be able to see in, in the same color space, um, but it will be a reduced color space. So that's a lot to take in. And then the other thing is that when you output them, then different papers have different color spaces and different printers have different color spaces as well. Um, and that color space is defined by what's called an ICC profile. So hopefully that diagram that I just showed will explain all that in, in enough detail. Um, I've got a video on my masterclass that explains that in a lot more detail. Um, and I've also explained it in a bit more detail in a video here as well. So go and check that out. That's from about four years ago. Okay, so now we've talked about all that, I'll come back to it in a minute. What we want to do is go and have a look at the photos um, and, and choose the photos that I want. So I, I've selected a number of photos here and I'm going to go through what photos I've selected. But the first thing that I want to do is explain how you would export a photo. So how you would prepare a photo to send to a print lab like Whitewall. And um, it's important that you get that right because if you don't, then it's, 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 you're going to have a problem. So right at the very beginning, what you need to do is calibrate your monitor. So a spider, data color spider five here, there's a good um, calibration tool, there's loads of other calibration tools. Um, and then you put that on your monitor, it goes through a few colors, and then that sets what's called a monitor profile. So that you know that the colors that you're seeing on your monitor as 
are as they are expected to be. Um, so that's the first thing you've got to do. The second thing you've got to do is set the brightness of your monitor. So you want your monitor not to be too bright. So if I get a print like this, and I'll come into this print in a minute, then you can see that this print at the moment is as bright as the monitor because I've got a massive light up there. But if I turn this light down, you'll see that now the print is darker. <laughs> so depending on what you're viewing the print in, changes how the print looks. And that is something that people always get wrong. They have the monitor too bright, and then when they get their print and they look at it, unless they're looking at it in really bright light, it never looks the same as the monitor. So what I tend to do is I set the brightness, um, and I use this monitor, which is a BenQ 320W, something like that, I'll put the model here. But I, I, I use this at a set brightness, um, and I use my Mac monitor at set brightness as well, which is quite dim actually, it's about four bars on my Mac monitor. Um, four bars means nothing, does it? You don't know how many bars <laughs> it is, goes up to, but it's, it's low down. So to get the best chance of getting a print right, you've got to make sure your monitor's calibrated, and you've got to make sure the brightness. If you can't calibrate your monitor, then if you have a Mac monitor, then out of the box, they do, they're pretty well calibrated. And also, you know, a good monitor like a BenQ monitor as well is pretty well calibrated. So don't worry about that too much, but if you can, even if you can just borrow one, buy one amongst your friends and just share it, because you don't use them that often is a good idea. So once you've done that, um, then you've got to um, export it. But there's a trick you can use in Lightroom just to check what it's going to look like. And as long as your monitor's calibrated, you can check what it's going to look like when it's printed. And what I always do when I'm using a new print lab or anything like that, is I go onto the print lab and I download their ICC profiles for the papers that I'm going to print on and I do some test prints. And I've done that now and I'm going to show you them. So if I go onto the white wall site here, there's really good instructions here about how to calibrate your monitor, etc. But you can see I can download for all the different paper types and you'll see that I'm gonna print these things on all sorts of different things. I'm gonna do a metal print, I'm gonna do a glossy print, I'm gonna do a print on, on um, um, behind acrylic, and then I'm gonna do some fine art prints like this one here. So I can download all those ICC profiles, which I've already done, and I can put them into Photoshop. So then when I go to the develop module, you have the profiles up here and you can select which profile. So here I'm gonna to go to Hannah Mule Photo Rag, and then I can simulate the paper and ink. And you can see as I do that, then it's changing the look and feel. Now the colors aren't changing very much when I print on that paper, but you can see that the blacks are being crushed a little bit. And you can see also how, um, you know, if that's gonna affect any, so you can see here that the blacks at the dark end here are just going to be crushed a little bit. So I've just gotta be a little bit careful about that. But if I go to something like the um, Ultra HD Glossy, you can see that that's okay. Um, but the Fuji Pearl, the, the greens are just changing a little bit. Can you see how the greens are just going a little bit different? Now, if you wanted to, you can then go and edit this. So if I thought, actually, I want that to be a bit greener, I can go and just change that. And it'll say, do you want to create a virtual copy? And basically, if I create a proof copy, that creates another copy of this image and it applies these settings to that image. And I can, I know then, I can rename that if I wanted to, but it actually names it for you. It puts white wall Fuji Pearl at the end of it. And so if I wanted to, I could think, okay, well actually I want a, little, I want a bit more green in that. Um, maybe I wanted it a little bit brighter. And so I can edit that image knowing pretty much what it's gonna look like when it's printed by using those ICC profiles. But the only way that you can get that to work is if you've got your monitor calibrated. If your monitor's not calibrated, you're sort of looking at the wrong thing. It's not gonna change that much. The only thing is you can see if it's gonna make a difference and when you print it to, to, your, to your monitor if it's not calibrated. So that's super easy. So what I did is I did that. Um, now I didn't, just to show you the difference on these different papers, if you don't make those changes, I didn't, on this image, create different images for different papers and just printed the same image on all the papers. Now, the reason I wanted to print it on the papers is one, I wanted to see what the papers were before I printed bigger images, but I also specifically chose this image because it's got greens in it, and I wanted to see how those greens looked on those papers because some of the images that I'm gonna print have got a little bit of green in them, So, um, and especially this one here, um, which I'll talk about when we go through to it. Okay, let's go now and look at the spaces that I wanna 
to put these prints in, which is an exciting bit, and then have an idea in my head of what type of print I might want to put up there, and then we can have a look at the papers. So here, I'm thinking that on this wall, I want a portrait image that matches this. So I'm thinking probably my beach baubles image will look pretty good on here, and I, I want it on a metal frame. So I think this, this, this metal looks really good. Um, HD Chrome, it's called from Whitewall. I think that will work really well. I just need to make sure I get it the right size so it's about the same height as that frame. I think it's gonna, it's gonna work well. The reason I don't want a framed one like that is I just quite like to have something that's just sort of contrasts quite well with that, but I want the colors to tone in. So, you know, at least I'm toning something in between the two walls. You know, the frame's not the same, but the colors are gonna be the same of those two images, gold and black, which is actually another project I'm working on. So in this corridor, I haven't done anything with it since we moved back from America, which was about five and a bit years ago now. And <laughs> this photo has been here for such a long time but it needs a bigger photo. It needs something much bigger. It's a big area, this. We walk past this quite a lot. I feel like this would work well with Enchanted Oaks, if I'm honest. Um, and I think it needs to be a metal or maybe an acrylic big image on this wall. Um, so I think this is probably gonna be the biggest one. It's the biggest space. This looks silly, this little tiny image here. And then just down here, what I've got, it's quite a lot of space. So I've got all this wall space, never had anything on it, and this wall space here. And I feel like this might be good with some actual oak frames. We've got other oak frames just at the end there. Um, so I think it's probably gonna be able to fit maybe one or two here and a couple there as well. So these are gonna be smaller oak frames. Probably I'm thinking the paper's going to be sort of a matte um, art paper and yeah, just matted with, a, with an oak frame. I think would look really good here. So I'm, I'm so excited about this. Why have I not done anything on, on it sooner? I don't know, but um, it is cobbler shoes. It's the last thing you think about. I'm so excited to be doing it now. So I think in here, this is um, our lounge and it's where m me and my wife spend a lot of time. Well, I don't spend much time because I can't sit down in the, on the sofas because of my back, but we should spend a lot of time and my wife does. So I think it's important that this image is an image that we go to quite a lot. So Wise is where we walk pebbles all the time. So I think Wise will look good on here and I think it needs to be in quite a sort of dark frame. It's quite a darkish sort of room, this. Um, it's quite an old part of our house. It's, it's like almost 200 years old. So yeah, I think I'll go well here. Um, I'm not entirely sure of the paper. I might try something a little bit different for Wise. Um, we'll have a look at it when, when, when we go to choose it, but I think that should look good. So let's have a look at these different types of paper. So one thing I would say is that um, they were well wrapped from white wall. So white wall do a whole range of different papers, which is fantastic. And you can just get them printed like this if you want to frame them yourselves, which is pretty good. Uh, I'll, go, I'll just go through a few types of paper that I think are worth looking at. So. Um, unfortunately, they don't do my favorite type of paper that I use all the time, which is a photo speed paper, but they do do this Hannah Mule photo rag, which is almost identical, and it's a lovely matte paper. You can see the color reproduction here is so, so good. If I compare it against this, it's pretty much perfect. Um, so that's good news. Um, and this was the one that didn't change very much when you looked at the ICC profile. Um, in fact, I'm sim simulating it at the moment but you could see that it's not very much different. But when you're simulating it, it's pretty much identical, which is good news. And I think I'm gonna use that along that long wall where I'm gonna have multiple images for different photos. So that's definitely what I'm gonna use. And then the other one that I think is nice, I wanted to see what it's like is Hannah Mule and William Turner. And this has got a lot more texture to it. In terms of color, they're pretty much identical those. This one's probably got a little bit more green in. So, you know, I probably needed to make sure that I got the ICC profile right for that. And then the next one is, this one is the Fuji Crystal Archival Silk. So this is quite nice. Um, definitely, you know, there's a bit of a color shift on this one. So if I'd have used the ICC profile on it, I'd have got that right. But I just wanted to show you the difference. So you can see that there's quite a big difference if you don't think about that ICC color profile. So this is the same image just printed on two different bits of paper. Um, 
So it's important to check that out if you want to get accurate color reproduction. So this next one is Ultra HD Photo Print. So I'm thinking on the metal prints of using this because I, I want a metal print of beach baubles, which I'll go into choosing the photos in a second. And I feel like on, um, there's two here. I've got one which is, this one here is just the Ultra HD Photo Print. And you can see that it's very glossy. This paper will look really good, I think, if it's behind acrylic. So I'm thinking of this one for a chanted oak. So this one really big behind acrylic on that um, bit of landing that's the big image where I'm gonna put the big image. So that's that one. And then I've got this metallic paper, which is really interesting. And do you know what? I'm gonna try something a little bit different, I think. I think one of my woodland images might look good for this, which is a bit radical, because <laughs> usually I'd be using like the William Turner, you know, really matte, but I think that might be good. So this is the um, HD um, photo metallic, and it, it just has a real metallic look to it. So I'm gonna try this, I think, behind glass for one of my woodland photos. So I'll explain the photos now and we'll sh I'll show you how we can export the photos and what settings we need to use when we export them. Okay, let's get into that. The big location on the landing, I'm thinking of Enchanted Oaks. I'm gonna print this on the glossy paper behind acrylic. So it's gonna be on this paper, um, which is super glossy. I'm gonna put it behind acrylic which is a brave move, but I think it'll look really spectacular, really big. This one I want in my study, and I'm unsure whether I want this matte, or I want it glossy, or I want it um, metallic, because I think metallic could look good for this, because it's just this duotone. So White Wolf agreed that they'll do three, and then I'm actually gonna give um, one away at the end of the video, so make sure you check, stick around for that, but I'm going to be giving away one of these um, big prints um, on, on metallic, which I don't know what they're gonna look like yet. <laughs> so hopefully they'll look good. So that's that one in my study. This one's the one that I think um, will look good in metallic, which is a bit radical. I hope I've not made a mistake there because usually I'd print this on matte, but I wanna try something different for, my, for myself. Um, and this one's gonna go in my lounge because this is the, the, the place we walk past all the time with pebbles, me and my wife, and, and we really love this, this image. It means a lot to us. And then I've got a selection of other images, these ones. So there's this one, um, which is in the Lake District, which is just a view that I, I just absolutely love. There's this one from Antarctica, which means a lot to me. There's the volcano, again, means a lot to me. There's this one from Rydal Water that I took quite a long time ago, actually. I'm not sure when I took this image. Um, yeah, about five years ago, um, which again means a lot to me because I go there and workshops a lot and I think it'll look really good. And then I've got this one just because I like the shot and it just, it's just a rainy, horrible day in Scotland. And um, yeah, I think it'll look good. So all those are gonna be on the Hannah Muley photo rag. I'd usually print them on photo speed and get them framed myself, but because I'm doing it with the white wall, I thought it'd be good to get them to frame them and everything. The disadvantage of that, it means that I can't sign them. Um, but for my own wall, it'd be a bit odd to sign my own prints, wouldn't it? So they're those. So when I go to export them, so Obviously the first thing I'd do is I'd just check on the paper that I, I want to print it on. So for instance, this one here, um, I can go to soft proofing, I can go to the paper I want to print it on, which is this Fuji Pearl, um, which is the metallic paper. And I can simulate paper and ink and I can see what that's gonna look like. And I think that's probably gonna be okay. The colors aren't changing that much. It's maybe losing a little bit of its luster, but I, I actually think the metallic will bring that back. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I'm not gonna change anything. What I do when I've done that is you go to File, Export, and choose where you want to export it and what you want to call it. And then I always export in JPEG. Now, there's gonna be lots of people in the comments say, you can't use JPEG, TIFF, you've got to export it in TIFF. You can export it in TIFF if you want. That's gonna be a huge file and it's gonna be the best you can possibly get. But I guarantee you're not gonna see any difference and I've printed so many prints between a high resolution JPEG and a TIFF file. Um, if you're editing it and swapping it between Photoshop all the time, then TIFF's important because you don't wanna lose any of that data as you're going through the process of swapping it. But for just this one thing here, JPEG's gonna be fine. What I do do is make sure it's set at 100% quality, and then the color space, which is, is important, is Adobe RGB. 
So that's the biggest color space that you can export it at that covers all the prints. So within that color sp space of Adobe RGB, all the print color spaces, the ICC profiles of the print papers fits. So I can be sure, and basically that will be embedded in the file that I send to the printers. I can be sure that they're gonna have enough data to get the best print possible. Then the, the, the resize, you don't wanna resize it at all. Um, so the resolution is, is sort of irrelevant really, because that the resolution is only relevant if you want to get it to a certain size to be printed, but you just wanna send it as big as possible because when you're in the software, and I'm gonna go in that in a second, you're gonna set the size exactly how you want on the paper, and I want it, um, if I'm doing these test prints with a border on, um, and then you just want the biggest, you basically just want the biggest resolution image you can get sending to the printers. So don't worry about that resolution there, it makes no difference what you put there. And then output sharpening, I usually tick that and just have it as standard. Um, that's works for me. I don't apply a lot of sharpening to my images though, so it might be different for you guys, but for me, that works pretty well. And um, that's it, that's all you need to do. Um, and then you export that, and that will export it, and then you can upload it to Whitewall, and we can go and then choose the prints and, and, and set them all up. So I'm gonna export all those, and then we'll go into Whitewall, and we'll have a look at um, actually getting them ready for print. I'm so excited about this. I can't wait to see these images. Okay, into white wall. Okay, so we're in white wall now. And what I'm going to do is I've already uploaded these photos. I just upload this other photo here just to show you how easy it is to do. So I'm gonna open that and upload it. <laughs> Simple as that. And white wall have got lots of different types of print that you can get and put on your wall. So we've got metal prints, acrylic prints, we've got metal behind them, frame prints, canvas prints, and then they've got all the, the sort of prints that I've got like this as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you one with a framed print. So I'm just gonna to go to one of these solid wood ones and we'll start with this. I'm not gonna go through the whole um, process. So we'll create one of these um, and then I'm gonna do it with one of the ones that I'm gonna put in there. So I'll do it with this image here, go to the configurator. And then it's really easy actually. I was quite surprised at how good it is because you can actually see it on the wall as well, which I quite like. So um, you can work out the external dimensions of it and we're gonna have it about that big, I think. And then we can also choose the frame. So for these, I am gonna go for an oak frame, I think, um, that's just square. And I'm gonna have just standard glass. I, I don't think we should have gallery glass, but I might put gallery, gallery, gallery glass in one of the images just, just to show you. The paper is going to be, and that's like, just like a really good um, way of showing it, I feel, but I'm gonna go to, Hannah Muley photo rag there. Now the only thing is it hasn't got white borders on at the moment and I really like white board, borders so I'm gonna change that and just add some white borders. So I'm gonna to go to natural white. Um, um, and then on the border here, I'm probably just gonna have maybe a one centimeter border. Yeah, I think that looks quite good. Maybe two centimeters one centimeter, then I'm gonna have a one centimeter border. So that's it, and then I can get that printed. And I feel like actually maybe my, this should be bright white. Yeah, that looks better. Right, that's it, I'm gonna do the rest of them. We're gonna get them printed, and when they arrive, I'll show you them and put them up on the wall. Can't wait, I'm pretty excited. Right, so I've unpacked them. They were packed so well, I was so impressed with that. And you can see that I've got a few of them up here just to show you that it's difficult to show you on here. So what I'll do is I'll put them on the wall. I am really genuinely impressed with the color reproduction. The, the, yeah, this acrylic one with the, with the metallic of this just looks so fantastic. If you want to win one of these, then my prints are now available um, to buy, my A3, A2, and A1 prints. And actually, you can also buy a couple of these um, acrylic prints as well. Anybody who buys one of those in the next month will have a chance to win the Enchanted Oaks acrylic that I'm about to show you, which is worth about two and a half thousand pounds. So, 
all you need to do is buy one of my prints um, and obviously you don't spend that amount of money. <laughs> There's some you know, good value prints, I think. I've tried to make them as cheap as I can so that as many people can get them as possible. And then I'll be picking one person, I'll do that live on Instagram, to win that Enchanted Oaks prints. And I'll show you it now. Okay, just before I show you Enchanted Oaks, which looks amazing, I just want to show you the other photos. So first of all, there's beach baubles here. It works really well on this wall. I quite like, I've, got, I've gone for the sort of glossy um, HD um, paper and Ultra HD, I think it's called, and it looks super good. The birds here are just picked out so well, so I'm really pleased with that. I also um, printed it on a metallic sort of, HD paper as well, the same as that I did the woodland print on, and that looks pretty good as well on acrylic. And then I did a matte version, <laughs> three versions of it, um, but I did a matte version for my studio as well, which works well because the light's shining straight at it. At the moment, I've got the light at an angle which works better. So I'm actually really pleased with how Wise has turned out on this sort of HD metallic paper. It was a bit of a risk. Um, the one thing I'd say is that this isn't quite as high resolution as an inkjet print, so you don't quite get that, but it, I, to be honest, it's, it's not that noticeable. What I really like is just how the metallic texture just sort of brings out these gold tones in there, and that, that's really nice. It just sort of reflects the light really nicely. So it was worth a try, and the frame and everything else looks fantastic. So yeah, I'm super pleased with this. So this looks absolutely amazing. It's just so good. It's one of my favorite images anyway, but just on this acrylic, um, or behind this acrylic, this Ultra HD paper just looks so, so good. Now, obviously, in an ideal world, you'd have a slightly bigger viewing distance, because but I can stand here and, and look at it, and it just looks superb. I walk past this all the time. I'm so glad that I've filled this space up, and it looks fantastic. And then the other um, prints are down here, um, so I'll have a quick look at those, um, if you just come with me. So these look really good, I'm really pleased with them. I'm glad that I did this on the Hannah Muley photo rag, which is equivalent to the photo speed um, NST bright white paper. It looks really good, there's no reflection on the prints, you can see the texture of the prints, which is really good. So I've got these here, this, this Glencoe Co one and Rydal Water, and on this side here, these look really good because I've sort of got fire and ice, so I've got my Antarctica penguin ice boat and then this amazing shot of the volcano from a drone. So really pleased with them. They've worked out fantastically well. Don't forget to enter the competition and thanks ever so much for watching this week's video. And thanks to Whitewall for sponsoring it. Until next Sunday, bye.